Hello, good, good morning, all of you. Today we have Arjit Agarwal with us. He is an economics graduate from Shiram College of Commerce, and he has a more than two years of work experience as an analyst in Willis Star Watson. Today he'll be talking about how to clear your first actual interview. So podium is all yours, Arjit. Now you all can. Uh, now you can start. Thank you. So uh, hi everyone. Uh, firstly, can you confirm if I'm audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay. So uh, yeah. So thanks, thanks, you I think she has uh, told most most uh, things about me. I'll just uh, say like briefly what types of project I have worked on in the in the two years that I've worked at this as So I work mostly in the life insurance side, and I have uh, I have I've worked with uh, multiple clients with some some based out of UK and some Indian clients. So we have done a uh, lot of model reviews for them. We have done a lot of regulatory reporting from them, uh, reporting for them. And so that is a that is a total report that I've done. Some cash flow checks, you know, and then submission of regulatory uh, like reserves, their liabilities, their asset and liability management, all all, all those stuff that the other thing that I've worked on. So yeah, so that that's a brief about me. So I I, I think we should just start away with the topic today. Like, Without wasting much time. So first thing is uh, how to cl clear your like your actual interview. So anyone, just can you tell me first thing that you need before clearing your interview? What is the first thing that you think you should have? Anyone on the chat box or anyone can raise their hand and just say. You all can use the chat box. Okay, Harsh. Harsh says resume or CV. Okay, anyone? Uh, anything else? Shikha, you can reply okay. in the chat box, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like all of you are right, but those are for when you have the interview. So the first thing that you need to clear the interview is first you need to have that interview with yourself. You need to basically. Uh, ensure that you have been able to land land yourself an interview, and then we can think about how you <laughs> can clear that interview, right? So I think that is the first thing. And then obviously, right for having that, landing yourself that interview, you would need your CV, you would need different stuff. So yeah, so firstly, I would like to you know, tell what are the different things that you can do to land yourself the first interview. So like there are three or four ways that you know that that it works. I'll I'll go uh, step by step, and for like it might be relevant for some, it might not be relevant for some. But like these are the more like four things that usually uh, help you in getting your interview. So the first thing is the placement cell of your college. Okay, uh, I understand it might not be relevant for all like mo most people. Like in undergrads, not all colleges have placement cells. So but when then there is placement cell. So these companies will approach the placement cell. They'll say, "Okay, these are my requirements. I need some actual analysis with a focus in my company." Then, then the process for that will ha happen uh, through your placement cell. So that is the first way. So not relevant for most of you, but yeah. But second thing, this is the most relevant, and I think this is what where you should keep your focus on and ensure that you are able to uh, land yourself an interview. This is the graduate intakes that each like, most of the companies do each year. So some of the companies that I know that do it are PwC, RSA, or let's say Willis as Watson uh, as well. Okay, so they have their graduate intake program each year, and they'll they'll take some people like throughout throughout the country they'll take people, and like, this is the most uh, important step. You know where you should all be aware whenever they whenever they the the process starts and. Uh, you have to apply and get, get get it done. Okay, so that is the second. Then there are third and fourth, but like these are for usually higher level entries, not for graduate level entries. So, uh, for higher level entries, it could be through some sources. You know that a particular company has an opening. Let's say for a senior analyst, for a consultant, for anyone. Okay, so through some sources or through LinkedIn, you know, and then uh, you appear for the interview and you get into it. So. But yeah, this also not relevant like for most of you. Given this, this usually happens at you know after you have some work experience, not for the graduate. So yeah, 
uh, that I think is for landing an interview. Any questions uh, here? Then I think we can go to now. If you have landed an interview, then how to uh, get? Uh, I think my has a question, when when the process of graduate intake starts for WTW? I think I think it will start pretty soon, uh, as far as I'm, I'm, uh, I am aware. And it like when in, in my my uh, year, two years, three years back, I think it happened around mid August or early September, I think. So yeah, it, it, it should start pretty soon. Okay, uh, any other questions? Or like, should we move forward? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, first of all, please don't call me, sir. I am I'm, uh, of your age only. It's uh, <laughs> and you can call me by my first name. That's okay. Yeah. So uh, for RSA as well as uh, like in SRCC when I was there, it was I think the second or the third company to come to campus. Like not not actually. I mean throughout. Uh, all companies, it was the second or the third company to come to campus. Uh, but I'm not sure if they've changed the cycles for recruitment. But yeah, RSA comes early. And Accenture, I'm not very sure. Like it it, it, it was not there uh, uh, in my year. So if it has started uh, uh, currently, then, then I'm not really aware. OK, yeah. So I think, I think then we would uh, start. Uh, I think Suraj will take your questions at the end. First, I'll maybe just start, you know, like now let's say you have an interview, then how you should like uh, prepare for it and how, how you should uh, crack it, okay? So I'll start. So according to me, you know, cracking an actual interview would have basically three parts to it, okay? So first part would be showing your interest to the interviewer, to the company. Second part is obviously your technical knowledge. And third part is your personality. Okay. And like when I'm saying first part, second part, part, third part, I don't mean to say like, you know, this is the most important thing or this is the least important. All are important. I just I'll start with showing interest. Now, what do you mean by showing interest? Showing interest it's is that you know the interviewer and the company should know. That the person I am interviewing, they have interest in that in the actual profession. Okay, so I think that is the one of the most important things because if you're not able to show interest, like, okay, this is the, this is the thing that I want to do, and I am not here just because I want another job, you know, and just to ensure that I'm just you no know, graduating, so I want to be like, uh, yeah, I, ha I have some job, and I'll take it, uh, I'll, I'll take whatever I get. So, just. To segregate yourself from those kind of person, you need to show interest. Now, how to show interest? I think the most easiest way to show interest is you have if you have some actual previous period from before that. So that's that shows that you no know, that that shows that okay you have done some research, you have some interest which uh, basically prompted you to appear for actual exams during college. So this is the first uh, first way to show interest. But then having said that, does it mean that if you don't have any papers, you can't get into the profession? It's not like that. You can show interest through other methods also. It first it can be willingness to appear for the papers and you know willingness to learn. That is very important. If you are wanting to, you know, okay, you have explored the courses, you have explored these subjects, and you are okay, I think I would like that, and I want to appear for the papers, even though you have not appeared for it yet that also you know qualifies as interest so yeah that is that is uh, this uh, that is their you know willingness to uh, showing interest uh, part and if you are able to do that then the interviewer would be interested okay okay yeah okay, he, he, he is into the actual profession he he wants to do it and then he'll maybe see okay now uh, do i want him in my company do i want him or her in my company or not so that is that comes the second part and for that part is your technical knowledge okay so this by far i think you most like you would that this is this this is the most given part of an interview and you would obviously expect it that your technical knowledge should be up to the mark 
so let's say you have cleared some papers okay like i'll come to for non non uh, for not cleared papers are different uh, separately but for people who have cleared the papers so let's say you have cleared like uh, cs1 your cs1 concepts should be very clear it's not like they'll ask you ki ye sum solve kar do you know or do this like 10 pages or write something or uh, 10 marks ka ye sum it, it it won't happen like that your concepts and the applications of real world they they'll check you know how you are able to relate and not so maybe uh, while working on a life project let's say example i applied some cs1 concept and let's say it was done uh, last week only and if i am sitting in the interview i would remember okay i applied this cs1 concept last week only so then it could be that they are asking okay this is the situation this is what we think can be done what is your opinion on it so it is very important that applic no it, it not only you should be able to solve the sums like exams clear karna is a is a different thing but you should be thorough with the concept so basically just just as an example when you say 95% confidence interval what exactly does that mean when you say a p value of let's say 0.95 what exactly does that mean what 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 is it that is uh, it is trying to show things like that what are the law, large of lower number uh, uh, law of large numbers and all that so like not just the theory part okay this is this 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 a a b and you say and okay you get not like that you have to you have to be sure okay what exactly it is, is it uh, trying to say so technical knowledge uh, let's say for example for someone who has cleared cm1 there are different sort of you know, different types of assurances that are discussed in the paper okay so let's say there are four types of insurance uh, four type of assurance which which assurance will have the most premium and why which which uh, which will have you know uh, out of this what how can you rank the uh, premium from highest to lowest all those all those uh, sort of things and you know along with reasoning so the technical knowledge uh, so like just to give you an example from my interview uh, few years back so it not to scare you but i had an interview of like technical interview of one hour okay so you can imagine what sort of in depth uh you know the requirement of technical knowledge is uh, like it's, it's, it's you you have to be up to the mark of all the papers that were here and it's not like they'll ask you paper uh, questions from papers that have not appeared so like you can you cannot like you should not worry about that but if you have cleared some papers then you are expected to know uh, each and every thing of that okay so now coming to people who have not cleared uh, any paper but they are still appear for the uh, appearing for the interview and they are confident that okay you have the interest so that is why they have come to the technical knowledge part of it so for those people your graduation becomes very important so let's say you have a graduation in statistics or you have a graduation in economics or anything in bcom so then what they'll see is whether what you have studied are you able to you know recollect and retain the technical knowledge of those things that you have studied so let's say you have studied course a you should uh, and there are some you know some simple concepts related to that that might be applied in actual also so then they'll ask you okay are you aware of this uh, what is like, what is this is and that so your graduation becomes important in that case but like, if you have appeared actual paper so i don't think your graduation would be with that important but like it still depends on interview to interview so not uh, but, so you should you should be basically you should have technical knowledge of everything that you've studied okay so i think that is that what that, that was the second part uh, then the third part and one of the most you know underrated part that i would say like you know people would come prepared with a technical knowledge people would show interest but the third very important part is your personality okay so see you are coming for a corporate job okay and it's not like you are coming for some like admission to college or some anything like that yeah nowadays admission to college also have uh, interviews but yeah but in undergrads it's not it's not there so personality becomes very important you should, apart from having technical knowledge you should be able to show to them that okay you know whatever knowledge you have you are able to apply it and you are able to communicate also to uh, you know uh, 
a client maybe to your seniors to your juniors anyone okay and you, how how you handle yourself then so there will be times that it will be a lot of stress, you know it will be a stress, uh, stress uh, uh, it would be a lot of stress like you have to work for 12 hours 11 hours 13 hours then how you handle yourself so all of these things come under personality and they'll most most of the companies will have different interviews for your personality so it could be a separate hr round where you won't be tested on your technical knowledge and not even the partners or the you know uh, and not even the higher like higher position of the people will be taking the hr people will be taking those interviews and they be you know checking the personality and they have some different methods to do it you know, they'll put you in some let's say tough situation they'll ask you okay what would you do if this was a situation and all those kind of stuff so you have hr hr interviews and then you might also have an interview with let's say the head of the department which is like usually a partner round or a director round so there also you won't be expected you know to uh, to have technical knowledge technical knowledge they'll test in a separate interview there also you know they'll test how you are able to communicate how you are able to get your points across the uh, across the board to the different peers to, to the to the people who are sitting across how you are able to make them understand this stuff so all those things will come under personality and so these are the most three important parts. and and you know and uh, for personality what like what uh, i can speak from my personal interview was that they checked how you think on the feet also right so and how do they do that let's say they'll ask you some you know while you are answering some questions randomly they'll ask you some riddles so you can just go and google like common riddles and they'll ask you that okay common uh, like uh, uh, some riddles they'll ask you in between just to you know kind of see how you are able to handle stress at unexpected times so you, let's say you are thinking of some uh, question that they ask and then suddenly they'll ask you okay uh, acha tell me this like or tell me uh, tell me this riddle to solve this solve this thing for me so these these are the kind of things that uh, you should be expecting right and uh, can uh, do do happen okay so yeah uh, riddles it could it could be a business case as well let's say you know they'll they'll have a 15 20 minutes sort of a uh, they'll they'll prepare some sheet they'll have some sort of like let's say they they'll tell pretend to be a client and then they'll just uh, tell you okay okay this is my problem and then you will have to ask them questions okay uh, what is like and then you have to dig in to solve solve the issues basically so it could be some sort of uh, a, a, a case of so yeah i think the most three important parts that i've uh, that i've told like showing interest having technical knowledge and having personality these are the three things that you know will help you appear in interview and now i think we can go uh, one by one like if you have any questions about any particular things then i can address that or if uh, pravin des you want maybe they they want to add something or ask something okay Uh, hi Archit. So I want to ask a question. Uh, can you share uh, about how your first interview went? And I believe um, most of the freshers over here will be appearing for their first interview after graduation, after third year. So in the first interview, generally we get very nervous. So how to overcome that nervousness, and how to excel our first interview? And this you can share with your own experience also. right so i think uh, i think this was correctly correctly pointed out about the nervous test thing okay so i understand that uh, first interview will be nervous and uh, and you know as a matter of fact to to just give you more confidence it is expected that you will be nervous it's not like that the board is uh, board is expecting you to not be nervous okay it is so some sort of nervousness is okay and they know that you are just straight out of college and it's your first interview so it's actually to be nervous but then what you need to ensure is that if you are nervous it's not you start blabbering anything okay you like you kuch bhi bol raha hai aisa nahi you you have to be very you have to basically have control of your mind in that case and be uh very uh 
you know mindful of what what are the things that you say because anything that you say that will be taken against you in in an interview like you can't take back any of your words while you are in an interview okay so you have to be very take 2 minutes that is okay okay like tell them okay i'm thinking about it and i'll i'll, I'll get back to this in the meanwhile let, let can we go to the next question that is still uh, fine okay but don't just say anything like and one of the most uh, you know things that i think will help you overcome nervousness is practice so see like before exams we do booklets okay one time two time three times we're doing everything it's basically what we're doing we're doing practice okay so when you know that you have an interview it's not like today 11 pm you will be told uh, that you know tomorrow 8 am you have an interview you would be given sufficient time so you know you have an interview so prepare when go so if you have confidence issues go to the mirror introduce yourself because the first question any interview anywhere it has to be tell me about yourself right so when you know that you are going to be asked that why not prepare it well and aisa bhi nahi ki usko pura rat liya have some sort of key you know you know it's genuine go and prepare in the mirror okay so or maybe tell your friends okay see uh, i have prepared this uh, tell me about myself for uh, you know my interview where do you think i am lacking uh, lacking or where do you think it's going good and where do you think i need to improve okay so once you know that you are prepared well that nervousness becomes a sort of you know a excitement or a nervousness okay that i want to go for the interview because i want to clear it rather than yeah i don't want to go for the interview because i'm scared ठीक है, so if you are able to convert that nervousness into a positive nervousness, then it will help you a lot. And one of the like preparedness and I know and practicing, it's one of the most important things. And you know, like uh, like like I said, most most questions, like at least for the personalities, uh, personality round or a director round, these things are uh, these things are like. Uh, mostly you would know about like these these questions are like you know common like there would be different variations but mostly common questions and can that can be prepared okay so so archit that was uh, really great and now i have one question for you like uh, what advice would you like to give to the young uh, crowd sitting here like uh, they're almost uh, about to give their first actual exam so you also appeared for your first actual exam roughly 5 years ago so what advice would you like to give that what mistakes you made and how they can make it better because you know that students are not that much uh, well versed that college is very important plus uh, uh, understanding the papers thoroughly uh, just not for the sake of clearing the exams it is very important so what advice would you give to them uh, okay right so uh, i think I, i think that is a very like a uh, good question and uh, so for people who have just joined into college what i would say is clearing papers is obviously important and for that you need to so don't just be ki i have to clear the paper okay and so ask questions be you know so starting papers i would say is like the, these these papers are starting with mostly very easy papers okay not very difficult and not something that a college graduate like people who are in college who can't do it okay so if you think from a perspective of clearing it then it's very easy to do it and and it, it won't take much time okay but then what you need to be sure of do you understand that what you are solving that's it you're solving one question do you understand what you have exactly done and are you so much clear with the confident uh, or with the with the concept that you know you can that will stay with you forever so that is the first thing that you need to ensure then from my personal experience what i'll say uh, like what what i used to do is that you know first paper, first initial papers i had this problem like i always wanted to be ki nahi mere ko i i have to solve everything and i have to uh, basically like clear 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 like, clearing is the most important thing then uh, maybe i'll see other stuff like uh, uh, how to understand and what to do and, and etc so my mistake was i was only focused on clearing the paper okay but then when you 
do higher papers you realize that won't help because concepts would be used again and in your interview or in on the job then you need to ensure, you need to be able to you know uh, basically use that concept that you have studied so that is there and one more important uh, mistake that i think people in college make is you know focusing only on exams apart from focusing on your exams that is going on have a dedicated time for that like whatever uh, like practice time you have like studying at night or whatever you are doing but then focus on personality development also so till school we have been taught you know to give exams get high marks get to your dream college and then things will be sorted but it doesn't work like that okay your college is the time the three years that you get in your undergrad is that time which you know can really transform your personality and and i'll tell you when you look back at yourself uh, from 3 years back uh, when you graduate you will understand what i'm talking about and if if you are able to you know so how to do that is that you know you should participate in events in college whichever college you are in participate participate in the events go and talk to people make sure you know people know you and you know people so that is how things work now Uh, just a small example i'll say for me you know i was very uh, uh, like introvert sort of and i didn't talk to much people but in college i realized that i have to overcome this okay and to overcome this you know i when i moved out of the city to delhi i ensured for the first two months i won't talk to anyone from kolkata okay i'll i i ensured i talk to people who are not from kolkata so this is just one example that i uh, that i did and now i can tell you that you know it's it's some it's it's like it's it's a thing that i know so many people that whichever city let's say if i go to let's say i go to bangalore for some reason i can be pretty much sure that i don't have to book a hotel there because there are people who can i uh, uh, i can stay with okay so that that sort of things if you are able to do it like build your network that will help you a lot and it's not only in terms of helping you you know in getting a job or anything like that it it can help you in life in general okay and that improves your confidence when once you know a lot of people your confidence uh, improves automatically okay so yeah so i think that is uh, that was very well answered now uh, one more question is you know that uh, actually is being one of the most uh, difficult courses in india and abroad right and it carries a lot of value that is why it is difficult so uh, now my question to you is it roughly takes Six years to seven years of time to complete the course. There are thirteen exams, and each exam uh, requires a lot of effort, patience, and hard work. Right? The students they need to go through rigorous training, and they need to practice. And then sometimes the students are not able to clear. So as now you are almost uh, uh, at the verge of qualification in the next one or two years. so what advice would you give to these people what are the key factors apart from studies that a student needs to have so in order to like what keeps you motivated ujwal has asked that uh, you have cleared papers you were there in srcc managing eco honors and now you are working almost 12 to 14 hours every day so what is that motivation factor apart from money definitely monetary benefit is there but what keeps you motivated that yes one day i need to become a fellow so the motivation factor so, so so motivation factor i think that also can be divided into two parts okay first is before job and then now is while on the job and after job so for before job the motivating factor i think is to get a job and like it's it's no denying that it's almost like okay i need to get a job and i need to see what i am studying will i like that or not okay so before the job this is a motivating factor and you keep on you know uh doing that hard work or perseverance to ensure that okay yes i am able to get that job get into the job i am studying for and then see how it goes so that is before job but the major you know part and the most uh, difficult part is like having the motivation on the job so basically like pavin just said i am working let's say 12 hours sometimes 13 14 hours a day and then you need to go and study then you need you know to ensure you uh, you know you clear the papers at some let's say stipulated time and so that has that takes a very much like that takes a toll on your you know mental health and you 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 think okay nahi ab nahi ho raha job kar raha hu usi mein i'll be satisfied whatever i am getting let's not you know 
appear for papers and uh, so for this part you know what i'll tell you is that what i am currently working on that is that is great okay but what the qualified people are working on those those things are very different and those things are the things that keep me motivated okay once i get qualified i'll be working on those things so that becomes the motivation the quality of the work that you will get and the you know and the recognition that you get after your you are done with your papers that becomes very different to the kind of work that currently i am doing and what i'll be doing let's say when once i qualify so just uh just uh, just as because it's you know, it's an internal thing let's say uh, i i can i can tell you some some facts internally so we work on let's say some mna project okay so if you're not qualified so you won't be put into that project let's say, because it's it's a very high profile uh project uh, an mna project or let's say an ipo project for a life insurance okay you won't be put into that so that becomes very uh, that that becomes the motivating factor while on the job that you will get better opportunities to work and you will get better quality of work so and i think that is what keeps me motivated okay so uh, one more important question to add about the job market there is lot of uh, like uh, there is not much clarity on uh, what actually is the pay scale that a student can get or he or she might get uh, once they have cleared around 5 to 6 exams so firstly i want you to throw some throw some light on that like if a person has got some good communication skills and they have cleared around 6 to 7 exams so what are the best companies uh, in india that they can target and what approximately is the pay scale that a student should be expecting and tell us something about the growth structure uh, that is uh, very specific to the actual industry that once you clear the exam uh, there is good uh, exam leave that you get you get compensated for the exam uh, like the paper cost and also like the increments paper wise increments throw some light on that yes so thanks thanks for asking so as a graduate level entry you know so on average let's say you can expect anywhere between 8 to 12 uh, lp okay as a graduate level entry just just when you have entered and most companies this uh, it 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 doesn't have anything to do uh, with whatever uh, like how many papers that you have cleared so what happens in most companies is that every 6 months or every time you clear a paper you get an increment and those increment amounts are decided like pre decided for each paper so let's say for cm cs2 it would be more than cs1 for cm2 it would be more than cm1 then for cb1 2 and 3 it would be little less than cs2 and for higher papers it becomes higher and then you know it runs into lakhs also for each of the papers for sp papers for sc papers so mostly a uh, like the companies in india have this structure and mostly worldwide this this is a structure that is followed that you get increments based on how many papers that you are clearing and so basically what Sorry i can say for wtw is Sorry to interrupt please mention whether that lakhs is in per month or per annum uh, so yeah so uh, lpa your uh, starting would be basically per annum not not uh, per month but yeah there is possibility to grow into it once you are qualified and you have 15 20 years of years of experience so yeah so like uh, as a as a fresher like you know that uh, when a student starts uh, searching for jobs right so uh, i guess one year of interview preparation is required it's not a one day task so there are some student those who are basically about to uh, basically enter their final year of graduation so what piece of advice would you like to give to them how shall they start like if a student has cleared let's say suppose cm1 cs1 uh, cm2 cs2 and they are like now uh, free little bit they, they want to give cb papers and along with that they want to start preparing for the interviews so what how shall a student proceed right so first thing is like if you have time and you have cleared papers then you need to revise those papers because i am sure when we are in first or second years mostly we don't have this 
you know we don't have this mindset that okay you know i should retain it maybe i'll i'll see it later when it comes so the you need to basically brush your whatever things that you have studied and it's not like going and solving booklets okay it's ensuring okay what's there in the core reading and are you able to relate it to you know what's going around so uh let's say you have cleared cs1 statistics okay so it's not that they'll ask you ki you you solve this thing for me probabilities pe they'll maybe ask you some sort of riddles or you know they'll they'll give you some scenario and then they'll tell you okay what is your uh, take on this so these sort of things so what you need to do would be go have a quick reading of the core readings okay and know what was there in whatever you studied so okay uh, lot like you know what what happens in most uh, interviews is that so let's say okay i say uh, i'll just take a name uh, randomly okay so they'll say uh, okay sumit uh, what are the papers that you have cleared so let's say you say okay i've cleared cs1 so what was your favorite thing in cs1 then you need to say okay this chapter was my favorite or this part was my favorite then why why was it favorite then while conversing with you they may be ask you some question related to that so in each of the subjects that you have studied ensure okay these so you should know everything that is a, for, that is that is like base one base two is like whatever what what are the things that you like the most okay and then base three is building upon those like subjects some like whatever questions they ask you based on those uh, parts you like you, you will be able to answer it. so something like that so that is what i'd suggest is go have a do, do some sort of revision and this is for technical knowledge and for your personality test and all for your personalities uh, development and all do some mock interviews okay like tell pravin dia he is free for 15 minutes he'll take like maybe he he's not taking some technical interview uh, he he can maybe take interviews for uh, tell us about yourself why do you want to do actuarial what made you come into the actuarial profession how you are liking it and all those things he can ask and then you can you know tell questions uh, uh, tell tell your answers to him and then he can suggest uh, what he thinks is good or not so something like that you can okay so can you please uh, throw some light on what are the fields like see uh, we have seen the industry growing since the last 5 years right so previously there were no jobs and uh, slowly uh, the big fours coming in and uh, ligi health insurance traders uh, equity analysts derivatives and all the banks and all their st- they have started employing actuarial science right the scope is ever increasing in today's uh, job market so throw some light uh, uh, what fields uh, where are there where we can work so h- how do you divide the segments uh, right so what are the fields where a uh, actuarial aspirant can work once they start the job okay. so first yeah so firstly like uh, i would like to tell about the uh like like he said that the job market has grown and it is actually very true that the job market has grown like if you compare it to 3 years or 4 years back so one of the core reasons for this job market growing is that regulations are changing a lot okay there are a lot of new things coming in like ifr 17 and a lot, and and a lot of different regulations are coming in so for which actuarial people are in demand and that is why the job market is growing basically because there are things that not all people can understand not uh, not all uh, you know basically what you are studying then becomes very relevant and it's something niche and what you have studied uh, becomes important that's why the job market is going so that is a that is one thing and now talking about in terms of what types of job you can get and what are the uh, different uh, like so firstly is being core actuarial okay so for for core actuarial then i can let's say divide into three parts it could be pricing so for pricing pr- pricing means pricing of products so it could be pricing of gi products pricing of life insurance products anything that is one part in core actuarial then you can have ca- risk management and ca- capital management what is that is your maintaining your solvency capital uh, i think people would know about reserves and uh, solvency so that then that is a separate section then third comes your risk management okay so that in core core actuarial you you'll have these things out of core actuarials then you can have let's say some particular banks which sell insurance they also have 
their actuarial functions and then jobs are avail uh, available for those also so corporate risk and enterprise risk and all those things are also there and uh, like if, if if people would have seen uh, higher papers so there are a lot of papers for financials as well let's say derivatives and all that so once you have experience then in trading also there is scope for an actuarial because of the course that you have learned because of the you know theoretical knowledge that you have that can also be applied and there are people there are companies that would be hiring some uh, some actuarials like if if you if you have you know uh, if you if you qualify with those particular let's say subjects derivatives or financial uh, investments and all that so yeah these are the kind of jobs that you can expect okay so archit now since we have a lot to talk but the time is running out so now you need to answer all the chat box question i will read it out for you in 10 to okay. 15 seconds okay so okay. so that we can take the maximum queries so the first question uh, is uh, if you fail an exam kabhi agar hum log fail ho jate to kya wo impact karta hai hamare cv mein to please iska aap answer kariye nahi so straight forward answer is no it doesn't impact it does not matter because i have failed exams people in my office have failed exams my director has said failed exams my partner has failed exam and just to get very it to be to just get it on 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 you know like get it very clear it's it's highly unlikely that all 13 papers in first go you would be able to clear so have this thing out of your head that uh, i have to clear everything at once you will be failing exams that is perfectly okay but then what is not okay is that you know not feeling bad about it you have to feel bad about it then only you will work better and you will uh, ensure that you are not feeling it the next time so okay there is a yeah I'm okay sure. so the next question is as a fresher what is the negotiation that can happen like not in terms of money uh, but in terms of work timings relocation leave before exam does it really happen like uh, is there any kind of negotiation as a fresher shall one do or not so uh, i would not recommend doing any sort of negotiation so like firstly like just to be just to clear the graduate intake that i was talking about those are specific programs and everyone gets into like irrespective if you have cleared one paper or 10 papers you would get at the same range you you start at the same range and then uh, everything is mostly same and it's not like you know you, somebody is preferred over the like if you are from x college or y college you are preferred over that nothing like that so you start at the same level what happens is how you grow now that will depend on how you are progressing with your papers and how you are doing on job like your like one thing that we fail to understand it that once you are on job then your performance of the job becomes what 70 or 80 75% of the growth of your uh, of the like driver of your growth okay like if you are not performing well on the job then what they'll do by having a, a qualified actually if, if if you can't do your work so that becomes important so initially i would not recommend any sort of negotiations and also for the leaves and everything those are pre decided okay so for like let's say for cs2 those are pre decided okay you will get these many leaves so every company has its own policy and you get irrespective of uh, whether you are uh, like if you have cleared already some papers you have not cleared so for a particular paper things will be pre decided and Uh, you would get that okay so okay. no negotiation as okay so the next question is uh, once a student has entered the final year after 3 to 4 exams uh, should they start actively looking for the ppu offers that the college gives or these uh, uh, outside companies we can apply like in village service watson we can apply rsa and pwc so what should be the aim we should wait till the completion of graduation or we should take uh, those ppus and should actively work for the ppus yeah so once your second year is over like once you are in the third year that is the major that is the main time to start applying for job appear for interviews and getting it done because what happens is let's say for the uh, for the people who you know people let's say for in my company who joined in june they appeared for the interviews in july when they were in third year they appeared so not in july maybe in september october or november december when they were in third year so when you complete your graduation your third year exams in may or june then you are just uh, then you have you should have a, a 
like ideally you should have a job in hand and then you are just like from college you are straight into your job basically so in third year you should be actively looking for the jobs and those are the uh, graduate intakes that i was talking about it is a third year people who should apply to that okay okay so what is the importance of college marks and uh, like uh, one of the student has asked college cgpa but i would like to add few more points in that like as you mentioned in your uh, webinar apart from studies the personality development is very important like participating in the uh, business events or maybe like you are the member of the placement cell or any other uh, organization in your college doing some sort of social work so these all also add to your uh, cv just not that you are just uh, clearing the papers right so what is the importance of college life basically i would like to add and please mention uh, cgpa the importance of cgpa so cgpa for Like if I'm just talking from a perspective of actual, uh, uh, you know, job, it is not very important. But it's not like that you can have three, four, or five CGPA. Also, you should maintain some decent CGPA. I think six point five, six above six seven is okay. You don't need to have higher nines, but then you also you can't have lower fours. Like you can't be failing exams. And obviously, you need to clear all your papers. You can't have backlogs. So that is one thing. So CGPA as per se. it it won't impact very much for the people who have uh, let's say actual papers already but what happens is if you don't have actual papers or you want, but you still want to get into an actual job then for the interviewer to see that you know whatever you are studying you are able to you know uh, get results out of it then the cgp becomes important and you know we should not blame them also because अब एक तुम कैसे किसी को जज करोगे कि उसने सही से पढ़ा या नहीं पढ़ा है इट इट इन इट इट सिस्टम सो पीपल पीपल नॉट 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 फॉर फॉर पेपर्स एंड दे दे वांटिंग टू टू गेट जॉब i am not very sure about the cgpa like it depends college to college but a minimum of 65% marks you need to maintain like simple calculation is if the paper is of 100 marks minimum 65 usme aana chahiye so uska cgpa if you calculate if it's coming to 7 or 7.5 that is the minimum that you need to maintain the 65% marks should be there <coughs> yes, yeah sir. i think yeah yeah i think that it has it, it is there for some of the companies hmm. right hmm. I, i think i think Hmm. so yeah it is important like for some particular companies i think 65% is right i think right. Hmm. so that that you have to maintain now coming yeah. to like he asked about what is the importance of your college life you know in an interview or let's say in your job so you know college life will prepare you for a lot of different things because it 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 is the most between school and job the most that you can learn and gain confidence is your college okay and if you are not you know pushing your limits in college if you are not ensuring that okay if now, i don't like to talk to people like it's let's say if for someone and if you are not ensuring that you know you are cutting that uh you know that thing that you have you know my i don't want to be with in college then you won't be able to do it in your job as well so college becomes very important for that bridge between school and you know job and you need to understand okay these are the things that i don't like push your limits and like you know get those things done because college may what happens is let's say you make a mistake it won't cost you anything okay kuch nahi hoga kuch farak nahi padega college mein tum kuch bhi kar lo par job mein tum nahi kar sakte na job mein let's say let's say you don't know how to talk to people agar tumhara you are in a group aur tumne kuch ek kuch kuch bola theek hai job mein uska implication kuch aur ho sakta hai people might feel bad you know kuch ho sakta hai कॉलेज में ठीक है किसी को खराब लगा देन यू माइट यू नो इट 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 कैन बी डन तुम उसको जाके बात करके कुछ भी कर सकते सो ऑल दिस स्मॉल थिंग्स यू नो हाउ यू टॉक टू पीपल इन द ग्रुप और हाउ यू प्रेजेंट योरसेल्फ व्हेन यू आर विद योर फ्रेंड्स और विद योर कलीग्स सो दीस थिंग्स तुम इट इज लाइक यू डू इट इन कॉलेज बिकॉज़ कॉलेज में इफ यू आर डूइंग मिस्टेक्स इट वोंट हैव एनी इंपैक्ट एज सच बट यू कांट बी लाइक ठीक है आई विल सी इन जॉब यार जॉब में करेंगे जल्दी करना ही होगा जॉब देन इट बिकम्स हाई वेरी हाई स्टेक बिकॉज़ योर मिस्टेक्स you know can have lot of implications so that is why job uh, your college life becomes very important okay? 
okay so the next question is uh, a lot of people are asking here that as you know that previously like apne time pe it was like we need to give ct1 ct5 without any practical training but now the institute has recognized the importance and they have introduced excel and r programming uh, in the curriculum right so i need to ask to you apart from excel and r programming what other uh, skills are there like in terms of technical knowledge that the students should have uh, in order to do good in, do do, uh, do good in the job so i think you're talking about uh, like uh, you mean software skills yeah yeah software skills and technical skills yes apart from excel and r because that is already a part of the curriculum yeah so see just like i can't emphasize on how excel is important because everything like 80% of my time goes on excel spreadsheet so excel is your most important thing and i think that is being taken care of by the institute so that is that then apart from that actually you know to be very frank it depends company to company so for like for me wtw we work on mostly in house softwares okay softwares which are like if i want to practice also i can't practice because i don't have the license for it. so mostly these things uh, so company to company mein in house hoti hai ya to kuch license liya hua rehta hai so it's not very uh, it's not possible ki tum college life mein you learn about it but then one more thing like excel mein what people are not teaching uh, in the course is macros is vba if you know basic vba that can help you a lot because vba uh, is used for modeling lot of the, lot of the times for the excel models that we built and it is used a lot of time for your uh, yeah like like i think what pravin was mentioning python sql vba these things are important and so it's not like ki if you know python then you you know it ki tumhe job mein kuch benefit hai it's just that if you know the coding mentality and if you are able to okay i did this in python so maybe if you want to do it do the similar thing in an in house software you can do it it's just that you know your logic builds and that is why it's important that you know if you are able to take out time for vb or python it it it, it helps so okay yeah it's but Good. but but to be very frank it's not like you getting a job or not will depend on it but it will help so one important question which no one has asked like it's very important like we always discuss about our uh, success but we never discuss about failures like right so archit you have also applied for a lot of jobs but you landed up in willis towers watson so we all have faced rejections right now what advice would you like to give to people those who are searching for jobs and you know how the industry works right if you apply in five to six companies then two or three might uh, uh give you uh, or schedule you or an interview and then one might select you so it's basically one in a eight or a nine company game right so how to face that rejection part right so i think i know it's it's uh, it's very nice that you asked this so like personally i would say for me i faced rejections myself okay like before getting into velistas watson uh i won't name the company i was in the final interview for with five people four people got selected i was the only one that got rejected okay like in in the final interview so mm-hmm. those are the sort of rejections that i have faced but you know uh, rejections they should not deter you from your goal because see it is part of every like every job let's say you go if you're doing uh, any um, any xyz you know you're doing going into consulting or marketing or finance anywhere you can't be sure that 100% of the time you would be selected or your whatever you're doing you will you will get it okay rejection will come and uh, i think it is important that once or once or twice you know you get because it's a reality check lot of people live in bubbles that you know i matlab mere ko koi kuch nahi kar sakta i am i am i i know everything or i am uh, i am very good at technical knowledge so you know it it, it uh, people people will take me in like so breaking the bubble rejection is very important and to deal with rejection is you know you should understand why you in the first place what was the thing that went wrong and if you are able to you know see okay this this particular thing i was uh, you know uh, pinpoint okay i think i was under prepared then it you know it's your fault because you you did not prepare it's your fault so go and prepare well second thing okay i think you know i answered this wrong maybe this could have affected my uh, interview then okay just move on it sometimes happen you it's it's uh, sometimes you might not be able to answer correct things and it's not like ki tum agar kuch ek bhi galat bolo ke to reject kar denge it could be like your let's say 
तुमने दस में से पांच या छह कुछ गलत बोला देन इट दे माइट बी लाइक यू नो ही इज नॉट आंसरिंग लाइक सो देन गो एंड यू नो ब्रश अप योर ब्रश अप योर व्हाट एवर थिंग्स दैट यू हैव लर्न एंड देन इट शुड बी ओके देन द थर्ड पार्ट लॉट ऑफ टाइम हैपेंस यू डोंट नो व्हाई यू गॉट रिजेक्टेड ओके देन दैट यू हैव टू टेक इट इन योर स्टाइल इट्स इट कैन हैपन यू लाइक नो यार आई थिंक आई आंसर्ड ऑल द थिंग्स करेक्टली बट स्टिल यू नो आई डिड नॉट गेट सिलेक्टेड इट सो इट इज द कंपनी चॉइस कंपनी Might not they, they उन्होंने तुमने तुमने नहीं देखा तुम, तुमने नहीं देखा कुछ so take it like it's the company loss that they don't have they don't have me I would work for some other company I would do what does for them just take it you know have that that much of self confidence and then move forward with your next interview don't don't think that you know if I have failed one then you will fail the other it's not like that it it, it uh, so everything turns out well if like, you just have to be patient and you have to Prepare. That's that's the. Okay. That's the thing. That's so one more one more question. Uh, after this, I would like to end the session because I know a lot of questions are there, but uh, we can hold more such sessions. So one question that I would like to ask you is, what is the importance of marks? Like uh, you have been a topper in almost all the exams, but uh, like, do you actually think that the marks matters or the knowledge behind that matters? Like, what what is the thing? Please clear this thing. right so uh, like to be very frank marks uh, does not matter so in the end passing matters <laughs> so if we're just talking about that so ma but marks marks see it could be that you know that day that some you could solve i could not solve that that is completely okay but it should not be like ki i am not able to understand only what the sum was asking or whatever uh, you know like मेरे को समझ ही नहीं आया क्या था उसमें मतलब ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए मास्क इज ओके मतलब ठीक है नहीं आया कुछ नहीं यू पास इट देन यू मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट पेपर नो वन विल आस्क यू बट देन इट्स यू नो यू शुड बी ओके कि हां कांसेप्ट आई न्यू जस्ट दैट आई वाज नॉट एबल टू सॉल्व इट दैट डे और मे बी आई मेड सम सिली मिस्टेक और यू नो आई फॉरगॉट टू टेक दिस एंड दैट दैट इज ओके बट योर कांसेप्ट इज व्हाट मैटर्स फॉर ईच ऑफ द पेपर सो लेट्स से आई हैव क्लियर लेट्स से आई क्लियर पेपर एक्स With uh, with just the minimum bar marks and someone who has topped it, okay. But the level of knowledge that is expected because both of us has passed passed the exam is the same. It's not like he has passed with uh, being a topper, so it's like he nah, he'll know more than because he just passed. Nothing like that. On the job, everyone is expected. If you have cleared, let's say CS two, you are expected to have same knowledge. Clear. It, it's just that okay, both have cleared. It's not like he has cleared with. Or she has cleared with distinction, something like that. As a question, you have to. So it's just about knowing the concepts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Archit. And I know there are a lot more of questions, but due to shortage of time, we'll end the session here. Thank you so much for joining us, and it was really a great session. Hope to see you again in such sessions. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, please, please, uh, please, like you know, if you think you can reach out to Pravin Bia with a set of questions, maybe ten, twenty. then i can maybe answer it on like something like that i can do it for you guys okay. if you want uh, thank you okay sure sure thank you okay thanks and please sir man bolo yaar okay bye everyone take care of this